Now at stage four, down to seven are in the book of reserving coffee, which is not with you here today. But we want to dwell on these first three parts. Elaborate more on them so that you can know how to handle your coffee so that it doesn't get to stage three, which is the stage of what? Fighting and quarreling. Because from that stage upward, the marriage keeps this keep generating. That is why we are emphasizing on these first three stages so that you can know what to do to stop it from getting to stage three. We are deliberately showing you the different stages. Why? Remember that this is a clinic. And in clinic, we, do, we give what? Prescriptions. The essence of your knowing the stage is so that you will be able to control your, you know, your harmonization of your perspectives. Now, if you know the stages, once you are crossing the borderline, you will know when to, eh, eh, okay, let us stop. We are crossing the line. So that's why we are giving you these different stages. Now, let's look at the first stage. The first stage of conflict is a stage of what? Differences of opinion. And listen, friends, this stage is very, very beautiful. It is very healthy. It is good for the relationship. Mm. This stage of differences of opinion is not a problem at all. In fact, we all need it to ensure we come better. Remember, when God made marriage, his objective of marriage is to what? Improve us. Make us what? Better. Now listen, friend. If in life, all you know is what you know, you can be better than what you are. Say it again. If in life, all you know is what you know, you can be what? Better, better. than who you are. Mm. Now the essence of this difference of opinion with your spouse is not to bring you down, but it's a principle of what enhancing you. Mm. Because if I know what I know, and he tells me what he, he knows, if I add what he knows to what I know, what happens to me? I become better. But most families don't understand this. The moment there is a difference in opinion between them and their spouse, they begin to quarrel. They begin to fight. They feel this absence of love. They feel, oh, my spouse is stubborn. Remember, we treated all of that yesterday. Listen, friend, difference of opinion is very healthy for our relationship. Everybody say that. No. The, 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 well, the demonstration we had yesterday for you, where myself and my wife described what we saw, was simply not in the stage one. Yes, sir. That is a stage of difference of opinion. Now, listen to me, brother. It is a healthy stage. Yes, sir. Because it gives you the advantage of alternative view. Honey, please say that again. It is a healthy stage because it gives you the advantage of what? Alternative view. It helps you to see what naturally you would not have seen. Mm -hmm. Helps you to know what naturally you would not have known. So hear this. Couples who know it, mm. take advantage of it. Only say that again. Couples who know Couples it. Couples who know yes, it, sir. take advantage of it and use it to enhance their marriage. But couples who do not know it, stop at this level. Yes, sir. <laughs> The moment there's a difference of opinion, they jump straight <laughs> from stage one to stage three. Yes, sir. I repeat. Mm. Couples who do not realize how healthy this stage is, mm. the moment there's a difference of opinion, they jump straight from where? Stage, stage one. one to what? Stage, stage three. three. They begin to fight and what? Quarrel. Yes, sir. And they begin to fight because of the difference in not knowing Hear me, mark what I'm going to say. Not knowing that this is a gift from God. Mm, mm. Honey, I like that. That this <laughs> is a gift from God. Yes, sir. To make you better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. this is a gift from God to enhance yes, you. Sir. That this is a gift from God to give you an alternative view. Yes, sir. Hear this. As long as, listen to me, all I can see is this. <laughs> but hear me. She is seeing what I'm not seeing. Yes, sir. Which and is I'm the essence of marriage. And I'm seeing mm. what she's not seeing. Mm. Mm. And here it is. As long as we understand this, that we are giving to each other to enhance each other, we don't fight because of the differences. No. What do we do? We take advantage of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We do what? We, we take, take advantage, advantage of, of it. it to improve our marriage. Yes, sir. To improve us. To make us better. So hear me, brethren. 
The stage of um, differences of opinion, opinion yes, is yes. a healthy stage. Very that, healthy. So when you disagree with your spouse, mm. don't let it get to fighting and quarreling. Mm, mm, mm. Rather, allow it to graduate to the next level. The natural graduation mm. to the level of presentation of view. Yes, sir. Which is what? Stage two. Now there is a difference of opinion. Let it graduate to be at, to the level of presentation of view. Now, it is only when it gets to that level will it maximize your family. Yes, sir. It's only when it gets to that level does your family stand a chance of getting the benefit of the differences of, of opinion. opinion. Now, I want to say this before we go on to look at the presentation of view. Many at times, many of us don't understand that our spouse is the eyes behind us. Mm. You only have two eyes and your two eyes can see one aspect of time. But God knows that for you to make good judgments in life, you need to see more, with more than two eyes. So all he did is to give you a spouse with another two eyes. Now if you allow your spouse's eyes what your spouse is seeing to be added to what you are seeing, you make better decision and better word judgment. judgment. We are saying this why because we discovered that in marriage many couples fight themselves because they lack an understanding that the difference of opinion is for their benefit. That the difference of opinion is to make them better. Listen, the next time there's a difference of opinion between you and your spouse, tell yourself, wow, this is an opportunity for me to become a better person. And don't jump into quarreling and fighting. Rather, settle down and enter the next stage, which is stage of what? Presentation of view. That is something, honey. Yes, sir. They need to understand this. Mm. No matter the root of the differences, mm -hmm. if you handle it well, one person or both of you will come out better. Yes, sir. I repeat <laughs> that. No matter the reason for the difference of opinion, if you handle it well, one person... Mm. I repeat, at least one person, if not both of you, will come out better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, but if you don't handle it well, the two of you are coming out worse of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is why you need to let it graduate to the level of what, to the level of what? Presentation of view. Mm -hmm. Now, we are saying this because it's important. Mm -hmm. And let me just deviate a little because there are certain people here, not only even in their marriage, even in your social life. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You can't seem to handle difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. Even in your business. Yes, sir. The moment somebody says something contrary to what you want, there's trouble. You shut off. And that is why, watch it. That is why your life has not made progress the way you should make progress. Mm -hmm. Because there is a no, there is no Mr. No It All. Honey, say that. I said, there is no Mr. No It All, and there is no Mrs. No It All. So anyone who shuts off, when, other, when their views contrary to his or hers are measured, will never make progress. Mm. That is why I said presentation, the, the difference of opinion is a gift from God to make life better for husband and wife. So now, honey, we are in the presentation of you. Yes, very important stage. Let's move to that stage. Let's move to the next, next stage of conflict, presentation of, of view. view. Usually, my husband and I call this you know, presentation of view, the other name we call it is Come let us reason together Based on Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 This stage is a stage of what? Reasoning And it's a very critical stage Please take note, it's a very what? Critical stage in conflict what? Resolution If you notice this evening, we are taking time to give you knowledge the word of God says that my people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. Many marriages have hit the rock for lack of what? Knowledge. Many homes are hurting today for lack of what? Knowledge. By the grace of God, our objective this evening is to hand over to you the knowledge you need to make sure that you resolve your conflicts. Like we said, difference of opinion is a gift. But you see, the stage of presentation of you is important and very, very critical. The way you handle this stage mm. determines the fruits the conflict will give to you. Say it again, honey. The way you handle this stage determines the fruit your conflict will give to you. Remember yesterday we said that conflict is a peculiar seed, right? How many of us remember that? It's a peculiar seed. And what's the peculiarity of conflict as a seed? 
It can produce two kinds of fruits. No, we are, remember your pastor said we are in a school. And in the way we are going now, we are going to write an exam. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. So conflict can produce what? Two types of fruits. Now, the way you handle this presentation of you stage determines the okay. kind of fruits your difference of opinion will produce for you. If you handle it very well, the relationship after the difference of opinion will move to a higher dimension of love, of joy, of excitement, and of greater glory. But if you don't handle this presentation of you very well, at the end of it, two of you will be torn apart. God forbid. Praise the Lord. So you are going to know how to handle it so that two of you can move on to the next level of glory. And this evening, we are spending more time in, uh, in helping you to appreciate this stage very well. Yes, sir. Because it is critical to your getting beauty and making that marriage blissful. Now hear this. Let no matter what we talk about presentation of you, in simple straight, in simple one sentence, it simply means explaining yourself to your spouse. That is it. Explaining yourself to your spouse. I That's like that. In simple one sentence language. language. Yes, mm. It is the stage of what? Explaining, Explaining yourself to your spouse. Mm. And let me say this. Let no man or woman here feel embarrassed mm. that he or she has, has to, to explain mm. himself or herself to the spouse. Mm. Mm. You know, some people can't understand. And let me talk to the men now in particular. Mm. Some men can't understand why they have to explain everything to their wives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can't understand why they must tell the wife everything. But hear me, brethren, it is not a sign of weakness. It is only a wisdom to maximize your marriage. Mm -hmm. say that. Please please that. Say it again. And having to explain everything to your wife is not a sign of weakness. It's only a, the wisdom to maximize your marriage mm. and prevent your marriage from entering into fighting and quarreling. Yes, sir. Why am I saying that? Because somebody to the first keep saying, no, I'm a man. I, I, why should I explain uh -uh, I'm the head of this home. I'm free. I'm free. Uh, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Listen, as the head of this home, I have the final say and what I say settles it. I don't have to explain my actions to you. You either take what I'm saying or you leave it. Mm. Now, listen, if you go like that, you are going to miss the point. You are going to miss the essence of marriage. Now we must understand. The part of the problem is that we don't understand what we entered into when we got married. Tell now them, listen. Honey, tell them. When you got married, male or female, that day you were dancing mm. and signing that paper. You were signing off your freedom. And let me help you today. There is no free married man or free married woman. The moment you got married, you lost your independence. You lost your freedom. You lost your ability to take the final decision on your life. That person you got married to automatically has a say and a stake on everything you do. And this is the importance of what? Presentation of you. I think we need to repeat this. Yes, sir. Because the way they are looking at you. <laughs> It's, it's like, like the man, the man, that's why I initially kept quiet for you to say no, it. The way they are looking at you. Now, let me say it. Hear this. In marriage, in case you deal, let me explain. In marriage, there is no free married man and free married woman. Yes, sir. The moment you decide to marry, you are bound to that person. Exactly. Listen, you owe it a duty. Mm -hmm. To explain to that person. Mm. Now, in case you think you are a free married man or free married woman, listen to me. When you were living alone, you can come home anytime you like and nobody will question you. True or false? But as a married man or married woman, you can't come home anytime. Mm. Now, as a married man, when you come 12, somebody will, you, listen, to let you know you are no more free, you must knock on the door. You must. Even if you have your key, there is a way your wife can lock that door from inside and turn the key and no matter how you push your own key, it won't enter. If you must knock. <laughs> you must knock. <laughs> that's to let you know that. Listen to me, brother. Why are we saying it? Mm. Many of us don't understand marriage. Yes, sir. We think that being married, we can do anything we want to do. No. Mm. In marriage, you owe it a duty mm. to explain yourself to your spouse. Mm. Whether you, listen to me, even if as a woman, even if you are the one bringing the money in the house, you owe it a duty to explain your actions to your husband. As a man, you owe it a duty to explain yourself to your wife. If you don't, 
then you have missed the point of marriage. If you don't, you have missed an opportunity to have a believer in you. If you don't, you have missed an opportunity to enjoy bliss and joy in your marriage. The choice is yours. Yes, sir. It's either glory or pain, mm-hmm. beauty or hurt, mm-hmm. tension or tension free. Yes, the sir. choice is yours. It's yours. It's now, yours. And, the, and everything hinges on this stage. Mm. Presentation of you, mm. how you handle it. Mm. Because let me listen to me, even before you leave here today, you are likely going to have difference of opinion with your spouse. Mm-hmm. Even before you leave the, the mm. church today, mm. as you are stepping out, you are likely going to have one. So listen, you, you can't run away from it. But listen, brother, in the midst of all this, it is this presentation of you that determines what becomes of your marriage. Mm. And this is where many of us miss it. And that is why many homes are hurting. Yes, sir. And that is why we're going to take pain to show you what to do so that your marriage will stop producing pain. Yes, sir. And begin to pr- produce pleasure. And beauty. And bliss. Mm. And love. And joy. And harmony. Which is what God ordained for your life. You are going higher in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you might want to find out what is this stage all about. Mm. In this second stage of conflict, what is it all about? Three things happen at this stage. Three things happen at this stage. The first thing that happens at this stage is you present your views to your spouse. To your spouse. Call it this way. You sell mm, you, yourself. I like that. You market yourself mm. to your spouse. Many of us don't understand that marriage is a profession that you must keep doing marketing. There is marketing in marriage. Now, if you have your view, your, your personal view, if you must be able to harmonize your perspective with your spouse's perspective, you must be prepared to market yourself. Everybody say market yourself. That is sell yourself to your spouse. And this is the objective of the first stage of this presentation of you. You market second yourself. Second stage. Se- yes, second stage. You know, you market yourself. I mean, the first point okay. of the presentation of you stage. You do what? You market yourself. You sell your ideas. It's a time where you need to sit down and help your spouse understand your perspective. Say it again. Very important. The first thing you need is to help your spouse understand. It takes a lot of marketing. You sit down and you package your ideas in a way that your spouse will want to understand. understand. The second thing you do at this stage is this. After you have sold or explained yourself to your spouse, in this stage, you listen. Yes, sir. <laughs> it is a stage of listening to your spouse. Mm, mm. Hear me, brethren? You don't only market your view. You also must understand your spouse's perspective. Yes, sir. You don't only say your ideas. You must also hear your spouse's ideas. So in this stage, you don't only talk, you listen. You listen. And uh, you know the truth about listening? Listening is hard work. And this is where the challenge is in many marriages. Many marriages have, or many couples have problems listening. You know why? Listening makes you subject to whosoever you are listening to. And the nature of man, naturally we like being in charge and in control. When we talk, we are in charge. When we talk, we are in control. But when we listen, we are subject to whosoever we are listening to. So many couples have problems listening in their marriages. They like talking. So the problem is that everybody, the husband is talking, the wife is talking, the husband is talking, the wife is talking, and nobody is listening. At the end of the day, the tension is doing what is growing. In the presentation of you stage, after talking, you keep quiet. And do what? And do what? Listen and listening is what hard work. A lot of discipline is required to listen. If we keep talking now together, honey, there's there's a, there's a microphone stand. No, there's, there's a table. There's, there's no microphone stand. There's, there's microphone stand. There's nothing there's like microphone the... stand. There's table. There's now, table. And in this instant, we have lost that stage. Yes, sir. Because why? Each one of us is only saying his own view. Refusing to listen leads to argument. And that is why in this stage, yes, you know. You listen also. You listen. And number three, what do you do in this stage? This is the stage where you make up your mind mm. what views mm. to adopt. Mm. This is the stage where you do what? You make, make up, up your, your mind. mind what views to adopt, mm. what path to take, mm. 
what, what ideas to follow. That's what you do in this thing. Mm. And in doing this, hear me, brethren, it may be the man's idea, mm. it may be the woman's idea, or it may be a blending of both. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It may be what? A blending of both. Mm. Now, what should take precedence or priority is the improvement of the family. Yes, sir. Not individual. Mm. So, now, these are the three core things that happens in this stage. You take your view, you listen, and you come up with a decision. A decision that will make the marriage better, that will improve and enhance the marriage. Now, listen, my husband said something, and I want to repeat it for emphasis sake. He said, in the third point, that is where you make up your mind, your motivation, what should propel you on what to take or what to finally decide on doing for the in the home should be what will improve what the family so that means selfishness must die in deciding you must put the fa family as what a priority mm -hmm. and what we discovered with if we are able to talk and listen most of the time in our home we see a blended view taking place mm -hmm. we see a view that is better than my own better than his own why because we've blended it together so presentation of you is a very, very what important stage. And because it's a very important stage, we want to dwell a little more on it. Now, how do you present your view? Mm. How do you package your view to be able to help your spouse appreciate your view and help the family move higher to a level of beauty and glory in the home? From our years of counseling, we discovered that many families, many men and women have good intentions. Their ideas are good, but they fail in this day because of poor packaging. Mm -hmm. They are not able to package their good mm -hmm. idea. That is why you see a woman say, I don't understand what's wrong with my husband. Every good idea I give to him, he doesn't listen. That is why you hear a man say, my wife is very stubborn. I advise her, she doesn't take my advice. I make suggestions, she doesn't accept my suggestion. Why? Because they, they fail to do proper packaging. So briefly, I want to hand over to you how to package your view. How to do what? Package your view. How to package your perspective. So that your spouse will have an understanding of what you are trying to say. It's not enough to say we are moving to Abuja. Mm -mm. You must know how to package the movement to Abuja. Yes, sir. It's not enough to say we want to build a house. You must know how to package the building of a house. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to say we must buy a car this year. You must know how to package the buying of the car this year. It's not enough for the woman to say, I need new wrappers. Mm -hmm. You must know how to package the wrappers that you want. Mm. Now, if you are able to package your ideas properly, your spouse will, not, will see reasons with you. The problem is that many of us are not packaging whatever we are doing correctly. And that is why we want to take pain to do proper packaging. packaging. Everybody say proper packaging. <laughs> to harmonize your idea with your spouse's idea, there must be what? Proper packaging. Number one thing you must do if you want to package your ideas probably or put it this way number one thing to do is never take your spouse for granted never take your spouse for what for granted never take your spouse for granted many couples take each other for granted they feel well i'm married in fact she should understand she should know what she's saying and in fact she should understand he should understand. No, your spouse doesn't have to understand like that. If you want your spouse to follow you and be a believer and see what you're seeing, you must never take that spouse for what? For granted. Never take your spouse for granted. Let me ask a question. Some of us here are businessmen who have business proposals. Now, when you have a business proposal, you know how much time you spend packaging your proposal. True or false? Now, you package it very well because you want to present it well. Now hear this. You know that your presentation will determine whether your proposal will scale true or not. Let me ask, how many of us here, husband, wife, have ever woken up one night to rehearse how to present his or her idea to the wife or the husband? <laughs> I'm asking. Now, how many of us have sat down and you sat down and you consciously rehearsing how to send your view to your spouse. How many of us have done that? Let me see your hands. You consciously got up 
and you rehearse. The truth is this, many of us don't. Now, but when we are going for business proposal, we so package it, we rehearse, we present it, we, we check it, we take this. it yes, forward sir. and backward, yes, make sure there is no mistake, mm. make sure the calculation is in order, mm. make sure everything, we, we, what do we do? We buy this, see this very well, and carry it like this. <laughs> because we because, want to gain. Because we don't want it to fail. Mm. Hear me, brethren? Good idea, poorly packaged will fail, even in marriage. I repeat that. Good idea, poorly packaged, even in marriage will do what? We, we fail. fail. You never take your spouse for granted. That you are married to a woman doesn't mean you take her for granted. No, no, you don't. That you are do that. married to a man doesn't mean you take him for granted. No. Listen to me. If that case matters so much to you, you will take your time and package it very well. You will sit down and ask, how do I present it to help my spouse to understand? The Bible in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 said, write the vision. Make it what? Play. Play. So that he that read it might do what? Run. Run. Many spouses are not running with visions. Why? Because it's not well packaged. God understands that it came with somebody and that person must work hand in hand with you. The person needs an explanation, a good understanding of your ideas. So if you must sell your vision, your idea to your spouse, you must sit down and do what? Packages. Packages. Ask yourself, what is the strength of this idea? What is the weakness? What can I gain? How will this idea benefit my family? Will it improve us? Will it, you know, you know, not improve us? I tell you, if you sit down and analyze your ideas when you present to your spouse, explaining your ideas to your spouse, Nobody doesn't like good things. Everybody likes good things. Mm. Everybody does what? Likes, likes good, good things. Thing. So every time you bring your idea and your spouse is refusing, it's because it's not well packaged. Package. So we must learn to spend time even in marriage. Marriage is ordained to make us better, to improve us, to help us enjoy life to the fullest. Listen, friend, if you must enjoy life to the fullest, you must take time and package what? Your ideas. Package it. Don't take your spouse for granted. Eh, well, you will understand. Okay, even if you don't understand, now don't worry, tomorrow you will understand. I said, just follow me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. The Bible says, write the vision. Only Make it, it plain. It is God himself. Yes, that said it. That said, write it. Write it. It is God himself that said, make it plain. Make it plain. Why? So that the person that reads will run. <laughs> make it plain to her. Yes, sir. So that she can follow you. Mm. Make it plain to him. So that he, she can, he can do what? He can follow you. Yes, Write the vision. Make it plain. Hear me, brethren? Until it is plain, you don't have a believer in your spouse. Mm. Mm. Until it is plain. And that's where many of us make the mistake. Mm. We just take each other for granted. That whatever I tell you, you will follow me. No. It doesn't work that it way. You see, the, the beauty of marriage is that if the vision is plain, when you stop, your spouse carries on. Mm. But if the vision is not plain, where you stop, that's where it stops. And it will take you, in fact, there will be no benefit of having a diff, another person added to your life. The only benefit of having another person added to your life is when you make the vision plain, so that when you run to a point, and you, it's like you are tired, because you have explained your vision, the other person will carry the vision and do what? Keep running. So it becomes like a relay race, where two of you do not get tired. At every point in time, something good is happening what? in the marriage. This is one of our secrets. People wonder how we run a non-church-based ministry. We spend millions every year for a non-church-based ministry running, and they, keep, they look at us, they can't understand. <laughs> the Bible says the carnal mind cannot understand the things of the Spirit. The spiritual principle says, write the vision, make it plain. Mm. That is the strength of our relationship. Whatsoever the Lord says to him, he sits me down and schools me on it. He explains it. Whether he's there or not, I run with that vision. Why? I understand it. Listen, friend, a taking time to explain your vision to your spouse is to your benefit. Mm. It is to ensure that that vision does not die with you. So you are not doing your spouse any good. You are only doing yourself some good. By sitting down and making a place, stop taking that spouse for granted. Sometimes some of us look, my spouse is not intelligent. It's not, it's not intelligent. Ah, a spouse that is not intelligent that you are married to until you make it plain. Even an intelligent person will become a dummy. Let's be practical. No matter how intelligent you are, when something new is given to you, that's why every equipment you buy, 
has what? Manual. Manual. <laughs> no matter how intelligent you are, if you pick an equipment Honey, without you, reading the manual, you know the yes, sir. yes, sir. Your packaging is what makes the manual clear. Yes, sir. So what is that perspective of yours? Yes, sir. Package it well. Package your perspective. Package it well. Package your perspective. Mm. So that your spouse can understand your perspective. Mm. Hear me, brethren? Even if God is the giver Package of your perspective. It well. Package it well. I said, let, me, let me repeat. Even if God is the giver of your perspective, you must package it well mm. for your spouse, or your spouse may not run with it. Mm. And at the end of the day, instead of beauty, you have tension. Mm. Turn your Bible with me to Genesis 31. Everybody, open your Bible. What are we saying? Packaging. Everybody say packaging. Packaging. Say it one more time. Packaging. Packaging. You need to learn to package your perspective. Genesis 31. Let's read and see a man who packaged his perspective. And at the end of the day, the family ran with him. Are you with me there? Want to read about the man Jacob from verse 1. And he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob had taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father, had he gotten all his glory. Verse 2. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not towards him as before. Verse 3. And the Lord said, Who said? Who said? And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy father and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. Verse 4. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock. And he said unto them, I see your father's continent, that it is not towards me as before, but the God of my father had been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father had de deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. Everybody say packaging. Packaging. <laughs> now, when God spoke to him, he called the wife and sat them down. Little bit, brethren, for some men, the moment they heard God, they heard God. They said, oh yeah, get, get up. up. We are going. We are going. No, not Jacob. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Because he knew the power of packaging. What did he do? He called them and he sat them down and he packaged this idea. <laughs> he presented it. And when he was done, verse 14, see the response of proper packaging. Verse 14. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us? <laughs> In our father's house, ever the effect of packaging. Effect of packaging. Now, when he, when he was done speaking, the wives didn't argue. <laughs> they saw his reason. Mm. Now, verse 15. And we not counted for, of him strangers, for he has sold us and have quite devoured all our most our money. For all the riches which God had taken from our father, that is ours. Mm. Uh, and our children's. Now then, whatsoever God has said unto thee, do. do. Verse 17. Then. Everybody say then. Yeah. Now, then Jacob arose mm. and set his sons and his wives upon camel. Mm. Then he arose. Yeah, no. He packaged his ideas and when he was done packaging it, the wives followed him. Mm. Hear me, brethren? In life, you can't get that person to understand your perspective until you package well. Yes. That is why whatever your perspective, no matter how good it is, you must take pain to do what? To, to package, package it. it well. Let's look at how Jacob packaged it and learn some lesson from him. Let's see how Jacob was able to package his idea that after packaging, the, wife, the wives told him, my friend, let us go. We are in fact, pack. What are we waiting for now? Oh yeah, do anything God says you should do. They, they became believers in Jacob. How did he do it? Let's go quickly go back to that verse... Um, verse uh, uh, 5 and Jacob said unto them I see your father's countenance that is not towards me as before but the God of my father had been with me and you know that with all my power I have served your father and verse 7 your father has deceived me what did he do? he started with the obvious he began from the point where they would appreciate he began talking from what they can they, they have seen it your father has cheated me Ten times he changed my wages. And it was obvious. Because every time they'll be waiting for him to bring food, money for food. 
When he come, I said, to your father said he was going to pay me 10 naira. Oh. He didn't pay me the 10 naira again. They were witnesses what, to it. So in packaging, you must be sensitive. Begin from the point of your spouse's appreciation. Mm. Come down to the level of things that your spouse will what, appreciate. appreciate. It's very important. Many a times when we want to talk, we begin our, from the middle, call it from the middle of the idea. And you don't start from the middle, you start from a point. Package it, let your spouse see the weak, you know, if my dear, okay, my dear, you see, it's important for us, you know, to build a house. You say you want a car because you want the children, but you see, if we can build this house this year, number one, we won't have to be running away from landlord, you know, whether we have food or not, once we are in our house, no landlord will know when there's food, when there's no food. We can be in our house, drink water, and nobody will know because you are doing what? Presenting points that that person will what? Appreciate. So if you want to package very well, begin from a point of that your spouse will do what? Appreciate. Begin from the obvious. Begin from what? The obvious. Jacob did not start, God said to me. Mm -mm. The Lord just spoke to me. Mm. Rather, he started with what you could appreciate. Yes, sir. So here, brother, and with that, the wife ended it by saying to him, whatever God said to you, do. Yes, sir. Why? He packaged it. So hear me, brethren. If you must resolve your conflict, package your perspective. Yes, sir. In a way that your spouse will do what? Understand oh, and appreciate very well. Number three. What, how do you package? We said number one, don't take your spouse for granted. Number two, use right words. Mm, mm. For the jo jo Job 6.25 says, have forceful mm. a right word. Yes, your sir. words for granted. Number three, how do you package it well? So that your spouse can understand what you are saying. Timing. Correct timing. Correct timing. Timing of the packaging is important. That is, the, uh, the timing is critical. When the time is in good ideas presented at the wrong time, we cause problems. Mm. Now, you don't discuss serious and important issue when your spouse is hungry. <laughs> you don't discuss an important issue when your spouse is tired. Tired people make mistakes. Tired minds take wrong decisions. So, you, your timing must be very critical. Yes, the timing must be such that your spouse is ready and eager to listen. Imagine a story, a, a, a true a story. A woman woke up, the husband, the husband came back late from work, and the woman woke, the, hus the husband was trying to sleep, and the woman woke up, the husband, in the night, asked something to talk. <laughs> the husband said, please, I'm tired, honey, I want to sleep. He said, no. I'm, I'm he's burning me. He's inside burning of me. me. I want to talk. I want to talk. The husband said, "Please let me sleep." I'm he's, tired. He said, "Listen, I'm. He's burning me. I must talk." <laughs> the husband got up and gave her a slap. Why? She and left the husband to go and sleep. The husband didn't have to sleep. Slap her before she 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 packed, She knew what to do. You see, in presentation of view, you must be sensitive to what timing. There is a time for everything. The Bible says there is a time to laugh, a time to be you know, quiet. There is a time of joy, a time to dance, a time to be quiet. Listen, you must be sensitive to timing if you want to present your view. When your spouse is tired, that's not the best time to present your view. When your spouse is, I mean, not comfortable, it's not the best time to present your view. If you want to present your view, you must be sensitive to what? To timing. It's important. Anytime you want to ask for money, it's when the man is at the door. Mm. And the man will tell you, no way, I have planned my day. I can't, uh, the money in my pocket is for my own use. I said, this man is selfish. No, the man is not selfish. It's a matter please. of what? Timing. Rewind, rewind. I should rewind. Rewind. Honestly, you know what I said, rewind? Many women like asking their husbands for money. The as man they, is in the car. As, the, as they are about stepping out of the house. Into or the they are about entering the car. Hey, hey, can I have 500 dollars from you? And, and the man says, no way. How many men go through that, they are, go, go through that experience? How many men? <laughs> As you are about going, your wife is asking you for money. Let me see your hand up. When you are about oh, leaving, they oh, ask, oh, all of you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh man, you see, me and people, their wives are not like that. Ah. <laughs> hey, Benny, see, listen, I don't know, but I know that many uh, places, yes, many, sir, places, many places, the moment the man is about going that the wife you want to ask for money. Hear me, brother. Hey, honey, I forgot to tell you. Please, say, 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 sorry, sorry. Just 500 naira, you know, to... Oh, uh, and most men don't like it. Yes, sir. And do you know why they don't like it? Because 
When they were leaving home, they put the money they needed in their pockets. Mm. Mm. They had calculated and projected what they wanted. And now you are coming to ask for 10 cover, even though it's 10 cover, it's distraction to them. <laughs> Anything you want, ask before they leave the house. Yes, sir. Not they are, as they are back to the house. So when the man is not giving you a grumbling, this man is stingy. Mm. Hey, he's mm. not stingy. It's just timing. Your timing. Your timing. Your timing. Mm. Mm. Your timing. Your so timing. packaging must be, listen, timing is critical for proper packaging. packaging. The next thing that is very important for proper packaging is environment. Mm environment very important if you notice for jacob when he was going to talk to the wives he called them out of the house to a place where they will be what alone where there will be some privacy don't forget that jacob was staying with his father-in-law so the whole environment might have been what crowded so he took them away from a crowded environment to give some privacy to the family now listen if you say the right thing in the wrong place, that thing becomes wrong. Mm. Sometimes we want to present our views or correct our spouses in an open environment and the spouse will react. You want to talk to your wife, say for example, you feel, oh, what your wife is doing or the way your wife is behaving outside is not good. And you go, ah, my dear, why are you doing like that? And everybody hears it. She will react. Why? Because nobody likes being pulled down. Every human being, whether we like it or not, has some measure of what? Ego. And we all protect what? Our ego. So if you want to talk to your wife, the, some things that you ought to tell her in the bedroom, if you say it in the public, she will react. She will react because she will feel you are trying to pull her down. So in proper packaging, you must be sensitive. There is a right place for the right word. A right word said in the wrong place will make all the idea words wrong. And that's part of the problem we have in our marriages. We say a lot of right things but in the wrong places. You are out there with your wife amongst your people. And probably you don't like what your wife is doing. Wisdom tells you, no, you just comport yourself and don't correct her in the presence of everybody. Take a step into the bedroom. Excuse yourself as if you are going to look for something. When you enter into the bed, you say, my dear, please, hey, my dear, I'm looking for this thing, please come inside. When she comes and say, ah, my dear, ah, the way you did your face outside there didn't look too fine. Oh, oh yeah, change. change. Change your face more. Do one thing that will make her laugh. And then you go outside. But you are there, maybe your countenance changes or something is wrong and you don't go, ah, ah. Why is your face like this now? In the presence of everybody. And she goes, how is my face? How is my face? You are the only one seeing my face, so you are the only one, oh. How can you talk to me like that? And then the people, simple, simple thing. You meant for her to be excited, to smile and improve her countenance. Was it right? Yes. But the way you are saying it and how you are saying it and where you are saying it now makes it what? Wrong. So for proper packaging, you must be sensitive to what? Environment. environment. Be sensitive to environment. You may ask us. What is the essence of this proper packaging? Why are we spending so much time on this packaging? Mm. In one sentence, put it this way, to help your spouse see what you are seeing. Yes, sir. That's the objective. To do what? Help your, your spouse, spouse see what you are seeing. Mm. That's the essence. Now, because until your spouse sees what you are seeing, there will be conflict in that marriage, mm. unresolved conflict. Now, the essence of this packaging is to make your spouse do what? See, see what, what you are seeing. And the moment your spouse sees what you are seeing, you are on the threshold of resolving your conflict with that problem. Mm. Because the truth is this, until the two of you see the same thing, mm. you can never agree. Yes, sir. And if you don't agree, there will be tension in the, in the marriage. And that is why you are packaging it to the point where two of you can see the same thing. To remove argument or tension in that marriage. Now the essence of presentation is to help your wife have what? The same perspective with you. Is to help your wife get to the point where you are at. That's the essence of what? Presentation of you. Your objective is to what? Make your spouse see what you are seeing. Now how do you do that? Now, at the all end of the presentation, see what happens. Now, at the end of the presentation. He that told... We had been like this. Yes, sir. And all have been, and from this level, 
I decided to package my view. Yes, sir. And in packaging my view, all I have done, honey. Oh, honey, see the microphone you mm -hmm. were talking about. Oh, I never knew there was a microphone in this house. See oh, the plastic oh, watches. Yes, oh, honey, I didn't know that. I didn't see that before. Mm. I didn't know it was. See a... the, 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 the control room. Oh, oh my God, I didn't see that either. Okay, now, I never knew it was there. Now tell me, is there any argument with her again? Why I have packaged my ideas. I have presented what I have was seen. And now I'm not the only one seeing him. She too is seeing him. Any more argument with her? Now that is presentation of you. I have presented my view. To, so that she has seen. And that has eliminated what? Argument. And now two of us are seeing the same thing. And you know the interesting thing? It doesn't stop there. Yes, what happens next? I now turn him. At this point, he's going to listen to me, honey. See, see okay. <laughs> Look at the table. Okay, I did know. Wow. I, I see the carpet. Oh, I did know we had this in the house. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was only plastic chair. Yeah. We have something better than plastic yes. chair. Yes. Oh, this is beautiful. Yes. Oh, now tell me, who is better off for it? Who is better off for it? What of all? What of all? Now she has packaged her ideas. I have packaged my ideas. And at the end of the day, both of us are seeing at the same level. Yes, sir. That is the beauty of Here the of you. Step down, honey. That. Yes, Step sir. down, honey, a little bit. All I have done by my presentation of you is, listen, he that told, I was here and she was here. Our levels are different. Yes, sir. What we see, different. Mm. And because our levels are different, we can't seem to agree. Mm. I call white, she sees calls it black. Mm -hmm. Whatever I call, she's arguing. And the only way I want to eliminate this is lift her up. Yes, sir. By yeah. my packaging, yes, sir. I am lifting her up to my level. Yes, sir. And now we are both at the same level, mm -hmm. seeing the same thing. And as long as we see the same thing, the argument and tension ceases. Yes, sir. So in marriage, husband and wife have a responsibility. To do what? To lift each, each other, other mm. to their levels. Mm. Mm. I repeat that. Mm. In marriage, if you must resolve conflict and remove tension, you have a responsibility to do what? Mm. To lift, lift each, each other. other. Because, important. listen, until two of you are at the same level, mm. I repeat, until two of you are at the same level, there will be tension. Uh, on, there will not be peace in that yes, home. Sir. There will not be bliss. Mm. Here, the brethren, many of us are farmers here, or we have seen farmers. You don't put moose of an equal height and tie them together in the farm. Can it work? It can't work. One tall one and one small one. They will never work it. It will never work well. So here, the brethren, as long as husband and wife are at different levels. As long as their levels are different, they can't have peace. Mm. They can't enjoy the marriage. So if you must eliminate conflict, tension in your marriage, you must do what? Lift. lift your Everybody spouse. say lift. lift. You must do what? Lift your spouse to your level. The husband lifts the wife. The wife lifts the husband. So that two of them can be at the same level. See the same thing. Appreciate it, the same thing. So when they say, this is white, they both will call it white. Mm, mm, mm. When they say, this is it. So hear me, brethren. I want to say to you, and listen very well. The tension in your marriage, the continuous argument and fighting, is simply because you and your spouse are not at the same level. That's it. I repeat that. Mm. The tension in your marriage, the continuous argument, quarreling and fighting, no matter what you want to call it, that can be summarized as this. The two of you are not at the same level. level. And when we say being at the same level, simply please, that means two of you don't have the same understanding. understanding. That's what it means. If the two of you have the same understanding, you will see things from the same perspective. It takes understanding or having the same understanding to see things from what? The same perspective. So one thing you must do as couples, if you must resolve conflict in your marriage, is to make sure that at every time T, you are both operating from the same level of what? Understanding. understanding. Now that, that's the truth. 
Hear me, brethren. Your interpretation to issues and events in life is a function of your understanding. Yes, sir. I repeat that. Your interpretation to every event you come across is a function of what? Understanding. The much you understand will affect your interpretation. Now hear this, brethren. When husband and wife have the same understanding, they will have the same interpretation. Mm -hmm. So put it this way. Husband and wife have a responsibility to make sure that their understanding is at the same level. Yes, sir. Reduce the differences in understanding. Mm -hmm. What did I say? Reduce, reduce the, the differences, differences in, in understanding. understanding. Very important. And the more you reduce it, the lesser the challenges and mm. um, conflicts in that marriage. And when we talk of understanding, hear me, brethren, it has nothing to do with school. Mm -mm. A man may not be educated, but with good understanding. Yes, sir. <laughs> A woman may not be educated, but good understanding. Yes, so when we talk of understanding, we are not talking of school. But hear this. What is the root, honey? Maybe explain. What is this root of understanding? Information. Information. Simply put, the root of understanding is what? Information. Information. You know why we are taking time to say this? It's important for us to understand that when we get married, anybody we get married to, we have a responsibility of lifting that person to have same level of what? Understanding. Because it takes same level of understanding to eliminate differences and same uh, the root of understanding is what information we are who we are based on what we have been fed with yes the, whoever whatever way we interpret issue is based on whatever information that has been fed into us all through what our life if two of us have same information on the same issue we will have the same perspective mm. but if we have different information on same issues our perspectives will be what different now, if you must be able to eliminate differences, then two of you must get to the point where your understanding is the same. That is to say, put it simply, you must be ready to hand over to your spouse whatever makes you who you are. Whatever information has made you who you are before you married. The moment you get married, it's your responsibility to begin to feed your spouse with same information. Let me say this. Yes, you sir. cannot change a person's... Mark what I want to say. You cannot change a person's perspective until you change the information inside the person. Mm -hmm. I repeat that. You can't change the way a person interprets an issue until you change the information inside the person. Now, let me explain to you so you can understand. Every time we are faced with a challenge, every time we have an issue, this is what the brain does. The brain goes into the memory bank, our brain. Our brain goes into what is stored there. And on the platform of what is stored there before, the brain, the, the brain begins to react. Hear me, brother. What you do is a function of what you put inside yesterday. Your action, your reaction today to issues is a function of how of what was stored in you yesterday. The information stored in you. Hear me, brethren. My wife will act based on the information she had. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will act based on the information in me. And hear this. If two of us with different information stand, we will act differently. Yes, sir. Then that is where, this to me, brethren, you can't make me see her perspective until I have what she has. He can't make me see his perspective until I have the understanding he has. It is until I have the information available to him that I can begin to think like him. Mm. And until I think like him, we can't have the same perspective. And this is a problem in many marriages. We get married, our understandings are different. And we come into the marriage the husband is expecting the wife to function like him, appreciate things like he appreciates. The wife is expecting the husband to appreciate things like he appreciates things. But it's not working. Why? Because they have different words, informations. If I want him to think like I think, then he must know what I know. Mm. I tell you a story. We got married. I am a believer in savings. My husband believes, I have faith. He's a faith man. When his faith stands, he shakes the mountain. And his faith... <laughs> when we 
we got married, and after marriage, I went to my say, honey, so what is our saving plan? Now let me explain to yes, you sir. why. <laughs> when I was growing up, I had this philosophy: eat today, tomorrow you die. So I didn't believe in savings. <laughs> So this, this was my philosophy. Information available to him. Now this my philosophy. Now my mother will want to travel. Will give us our allowance for a whole week. I'll tell myself how my child will be alive till the follow till, till the evening. Better eat everything now because if I die, my sisters will take it. So information available. I will to eat him. everything. Then in the, in the evening, I'll be looking at them. <laughs> now so. I grew up without understanding and added with that, I now had faith. Yes, sir. The faith to move mountains. Faith to move mountains. So when we got married, and after we, we I said to her, honey, what is saving scheme? He said, saving what? I said, scheme. So no, I don't believe in savings. It's, uh, I don't save. That yes. my faith can produce anything. Yes, he said, my faith can produce what? Anything. In fact, let me tell you, my faith works so. <laughs> You know, his faith works for the wedding. <laughs> my, listen, even for my wedding, I did not save. I had only 10 naira in my bank account mm -hmm. when I wedded. Mm -hmm. And I had a very wonderful wedding. His faith produced everything. In my faith produced a cow. Mm -hmm. My faith produced I've had everything, everything I needed. Wedding. Yes, Imported wedding card, everything. But my, my faith produced that with 10 naira, I wedded like a king. Mm -hmm. So I have faith. Yes, I have faith. So when I talked about saving, he said, save what? Then I said, ah, me, I believe in service. Ah, you can be saving your own. Oh. Me, I know that whenever I need anything, bam, <laughs> it will just happen. Well, it will give me money from the food money I can do, but no matter what, I will, I will be saving. You know the interesting thing? Sometimes with years, as the years went by, sometimes his faith ended up in that. <laughs> now, wait, 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 wait. Did now, I mention anything? Listen to me. Sometimes my <laughs> faith, listen, my faith that when I need the money, it will come out. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter the source, does it? <laughs> my friend is that when I need the money, it will pass on it. Whether it is from my wife or my children, it, it just doesn't matter. Out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And it was like this, friends, for almost 12, for 12 years. We never fought, we never quarreled about it because I will always sometimes expect on them. But something happened telling you the power of information. You can't change the way a man thinks. thinks. Until you change the source inform of information. That's it. Until after 12 years, my husband stumbled on a book. A book, I can't remember the title of that book, but that book changed my husband's perspective as it had to do with savings. It's all you, all you can do is all you need to do. All you need to do is all you can do. Something like that. But the principle of that book was on savings. You don't finish everything with you. You, you, you gather, you know. And after my husband finished reading, friends, <laughs> His perspective did what changed. My husband became an extremist in savings. You know, he, he, it, it was first at one extreme, no savings. When he began savings, he became super saver. Everything saved. Save. Ah. Everything saved. Save. I said, honey, I beg now. Now she's begging me to reduce it. <laughs> <laughs> now I say, no, we must save. <laughs> now, where am I going? When he stumbled on an information... His perspective did what? Changed. Now this is where we are going. That spouse of yours has all it takes to make you happy. If the spouse is not making you happy, it's not because the spouse does not want to make you happy. The spouse is only acting based on the information, information. he or she has gathered over the years. Now the beginning point of making that spouse make you happy is not by getting angry. But it's by changing the information available to the spouse. Mm. That's why it's important for husband and wife to expose themselves to the same level of what? Inform that, yes. And that is what it is. When you lift your spouse yes, up, yes, you sir. are lifting your spouse to your level. Yes, sir. Here this, take for instance, before we came yesterday, mm. some of you had a different information about certain things. Mm. Now, based on our teaching yesterday, some of you, your perspective have changed in life. True or false? Now, the way some of you can't do certain things is no more the way. Now, some of you could have gotten more angry with certain things your spouse used to do. But now, you, don't get, you, won't, you won't get as you angry as you yes, used to sir. be. Yes, Am I correct? Now, here this. All we did was to change the information inside you. Yes, sir. We changed the information, your perspective changed. 
And because your perspective changed, tension in that marriage changed. What used to cause tension is no more there. Hear me, brethren? Listen to me. The key, the key to conflict resolution is husband and wife changing the information available to them. If the two of them have access to the same information, their perspective will be the same. Yes, sir. In life, the way we think, the way we act, is a function of the memories stored in us. All that we have stored in us comes up when we have to respond to issues. What we say is what we knew yesterday. How we act is what we knew yesterday. And if husband and wife can know the same thing, yes, sir. if husband and wife can act in the same way, one thing is certain. Hear me, brethren. They are take, their conflict will be greatly narrowed. Mm -hmm. Their difference will be greatly narrowed. So put it this way. I want to say this to you. The key or the reason for the high tension in your home is that two of you are exposed to different information. Yes, sir. Two of you are exposed to what? Different, different information. information. So you respond differently yes, sir. to the same issue. You act differently to the same issue. Now, if that conflict must be handled, then two of you need to be exposed to the same, same. thing. And as long as you are exposed to the same thing, the one thing is certain, you can handle issues properly. A man is what he knows. Yes, sir. A woman is what he what knows. She knows. Yes, sir. You can never act beyond what you know. Mm. And what you know is a function of the information available to you. And that is why I want to say to you, you can't resolve the differences between your spouse until you change what your spouse knows. And by the grace of God, tomorrow will be handing over to you how to change what your spouse knows. We'll be handing over to you what each one knows. Because the truth is this, until you know the same thing, you can't have the same perspective. And when you have the same, when you know the same thing, your perspective will be the same. Rise on your feet. Lift up your voice and say to the Lord, help me to have proper insight into accurate packaging of my ideas. The way you package your ideas will go a long way to determine whether your spouse will understand you. Packaging it it's one of the ways to inform your spouse. Packaging is one way to inform your spouse. We're going to pray one prayer. The Bible says, let us have grace on our lips. Grace on our lips. You're going to pray this prayer. Lord, put grace on my lips. Even the grace to say the right things. Even as I package my ideas, my perspectives to my spouse. You don't assume that anything you say, your spouse will follow you. And no, you don't assume that. Jacob packaged these ideas very well. And the wife followed. Woman, are you packaging your idea? Jesus mighty name we pray in 2nd Kings chapter 4 starting from verse 8 the Bible talks about the Shunammite woman the Bible said and every time Elisha would pass and she would constrain Elisha to come and eat and she went to the other and said I perceive that this is a holy man I pray thee let us make a house for him now hear this. She perceived in her spirit, but she packaged it with I pray thee. Yes, and the husband agreed. Hear me, woman. No matter how spiritual you are, 
If you can't package that idea very well, your husband won't accept it. She said, I perceive, but I pray thee. I perceive, but I do what? I pray thee. I beg you, my husband. Listen to me. The Bible called her a great woman. As great as she was, she packaged by saying, I beg you. Listen to me. Jacob was the head of the home. But he packaged these ideas in a way that the wife said, we must follow you. Everybody put your right hand on your forehead. Father, give us the wisdom to package our ideas. Even the wisdom to package it in a way that will remove conflict. Lord God, every foolish packaging, this night I destroy them. Starting from today, no matter how small the issue, give us the wisdom to package it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear me, brethren. Listen to me. I want to take note of this. There is no small issue in marriage. What did I say? There is no small issue in marriage. Remember we said to you yesterday that conflict is a seed that cannot grow you. You know the simple thing? Honey, buy bread for me when you are coming. If not properly packaged, can drive a woman from the house. Ordinary buy bread. Are you hearing me? Ordinary what buy bread? If that woman doesn't package it well, the husband will return and give her slap. And before you know it, there will be a problem. So there is no small issue in marriage. Every issue must be properly packaged. And you see, and this is where we miss it. We think this one doesn't matter. This one matters. This one is a serious case. This one is not serious case. Every case is a serious case in marriage. Why? Because everyone is, has the potential of making your marriage great or small. Or, 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 or destroying it. That is why from today, lift up your two hands. The wisdom to take every issue serious. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. The wisdom to take every issue as serious as it should. Receive it now. Starting from this day. As you open your mouth, the right words will come out of your mouth. My Father and my God, I stand on your word that say, how forceful, how forceful a right word. For every man, for every woman, let only the right words come out of our mouth. The right words that we convince our spouses. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.